Okay, we have a graph of a parabola, and the question is, um, is this a function? Okay, so uh, obviously you want to be able to support the answer to your question. You just don't want to guess and be like, yeah, it's a function, but you know, why is it a function? And support you know, your answer, um, whether it's a function or not. you got to justify it, right? So that's the whole idea of this video is to see if you know what a function is and how you can justify it. But we're going to take it a step further. If you say this is a function, I'm not saying it is, but if it is indeed a function, is it a one-to-one -one function? So we got a bonus question here as well. And uh, functions are just an absolute uh, must in algebra. It's such a huge topic in mathematics. You've got to understand functions. There's a lot to functions. And, um, you know, we kind of take them, I don't say for granted because they're so common. You see the, the notation like f of x, and you hear these terms like domain and range, etc. cetera. But um, oftentimes students um, uh, don't really have a strong foundation in like just the basics, like what is a function? Let's make sure we understand that. And uh, what is a one-to-one -one function? That's important as well because it has something to do with the idea of a function inverse. So uh, this video would be appropriate for those of you for sure that are taking like a, um, a basic algebra class. Maybe if you're pre-algebra, it might be a little bit basic, but if you're in pre-algebra and watching this video, you're just going to be doing awesome. You're going to like impress your teacher. You're going to be like, oh, man, you know, you can just skip pre-algebra. So stick around. Uh, even if you're not studying this topic, you're going to learn something. So we're going to get to all of this in just one second. But um, when it comes to functions, I always love to say, look, here is the root word of the word function. It is fun. So we need to kind of like just trick our brain like this is fun stuff. I love math. And if you love math or even if you don't you know, love math. And I get it if you're like, oh, I just want to get my homework done. I want to pass this test. Listen, uh, the way you approach any topic, your attitude towards it is going to really uh, determine your success. So well, I'm going to teach you all of this, okay, hopefully in a clear and understandable way in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and uh, high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video, but basically I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, uh, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly. I'm very excited about that. All my courses have taken me years to build. I don't do little quick tutorials. I teach extremely comprehensive. I show you how to do solve thousands of problems. I really, really get into it. That's why I just don't, you know, like, you know, put together like a little, like a uh, summary of things. If you really want to learn math, I think uh, you'll be hard for pressed to find a program more comprehensive than mine. But I also have a lot of um, courses in the area of uh, test preparation. And so if you're studying for the test, I can say the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP, Accuplacer, teacher certification, um, nursing entrance. There's a ton of reasons uh, people are studying math. You don't have to be uh, in a math class. So you need, if you need math help for these particular exams, check, go to my site, check out my uh, full course catalog. I likely have your exam. If I don't, drop me a line and I'll help you out, uh, give you my best guidance. Um, also, I do a lot of work with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program. So if you uh, homeschool, you definitely want to check out my site. And then lastly, I just help those of you who are struggling in your current math class. Maybe you're uh, taking algebra one and you're frustrated, my program certainly help you out. But one thing you have to be doing to help yourself out in terms of mathematics, I'm assuming you want to do well in math by virtue of you watching this video, is to take great math notes. This is where most students uh, just don't, they don't do this part. This is absolutely critical, fundamental to your success, okay? So over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, okay? Those students who take excellent math notes, not just good math notes, I'm talking about great math notes, almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who were like me back in the 1980s when, you know, uh, yeah, I mean that, well, first of all, I have to say it was pretty cool growing up in the 1980s. But, you know, listen, were we, you know, distracted as today? Yes, we did. Uh, people, even your grandparents, I'm sure, were distracted in high school. So no one's perfect. I mean, I was distracted. Uh, so if you're distracted with your cell phone or your best friends or whatever the case is, you got to get undistracted or you're not going to do well in math. Okay. So everyone could do well in math, but they got to focus. And the number one activity that will help you focus is taking great notes, really take great notes. All right. So in the meantime, as you improve in your note taking, I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, 
uh, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Found links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here's a situation. I got some. Uh, I got a parabola here. All right now, um, I can give you some like extra words that can kind of help you answer this question. But I'm just saying this is a parabola. Okay, so use your current knowledge of mathematics. So it's this parabola. It's a U-shaped graph. And I got some points that are on that parabola. Okay, so we're going to answer two questions here. Is this a function? Okay, and then we're going to answer that a couple different ways. And then uh, we're going to determine if it is a function, is it a one-to-one -one function? And this is all very important stuff. So let's just quickly uh, do a review here, a real fast review. So in mathematics, okay, we have these things called relations. Relations and uh, you can just think of relations as things we can uh, graph. Uh, there's a lot of different kind of uh, ways to define that. But here, let's say we have an x, y uh, graph. So relations can be like a point, any x, y point or a set of points. So these can come in different uh, flavors. They can be a graph like that, like a line. They could be some sort of like uh, polynomial, you know, some sort of parabola. But these are relations, okay? And again, uh, there's other kind of ways we can define it, but this is a good way to think about it. Now, some relations, some relations are what we call functions, okay? So all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. That's a very, very important uh, concept. And functions are important. They're unique type of relations. Now, in the uh, realm of functions, some functions are what we call one-to-one -one functions. So not all functions are one-to-one. -one. Now, why do we care if a function is one-to-one? -one? Because if a function is a one-to-one -one function, that uh, function has an inverse function, okay? So if you're studying inverse functions, um, then, you know, you need to know, hey, if, you know, I'm dealing with a function, is it a one-to-one -one function? Then, okay, there is an, uh, an inverse function. An inverse function uh, has unique properties and uh, you know, the inverse and a function have unique characteristics, and we're going to kind of highlight that. So this is kind of the overview of what we're talking about. So hopefully you're kind of with me on this. Now, again, um, uh, we need to kind of have a good uh, foundational understanding of what a function is. I have tons and tons of videos on functions in my algebra, uh, algebra 2, algebra, um, all my playlist, uh, algebra playlist on my channel. So that's all my free stuff. If you really, really want to master this stuff, I would suggest kind of jumping into like my algebra 1 or algebra 2 course. Um, I get thoroughly into uh, functions. Now, uh, so the question is this. We have uh, a uh, some sort of relation, okay, we're seeing it graphically, this parabola, and we're going to determine is this a function or not. So let's go ahead and uh, start with that answer. And you can see here I have some stuff written up uh, to kind of guide us through. But the first thing is the following, okay? Let's just determine is this, does this graph here, I told you it's a parabola, does it represent a function? All right, and we'll use this little notation, this f of x to say function. Uh, so the answer is yes, okay? It isn't a function, okay? But why is it a function? Well, a couple of different uh, ways we can kind of explain this. Uh, the first is it passes, and the most obvious, probably the, uh, the most uh, correct response is that this parabola passes uh, the vertical line test. So if you're not familiar with the vertical line test, it's an auto awesome little test. And basically it says, if I can draw a vertical line through this graph, Okay, now this is, I'm trying to make this as vertical as possible. And that line only crosses the graph one time. Okay, anywhere I draw a vertical line, like right here, if it only chops through the graph one time, then it passes the vertical line test. And the vertical line test is a graphical test that we can apply to graphs to determine if that graph represents a function. Okay, so here, I can I can draw a vertical line anywhere along this graph. The only, as much, I'm only going to be able to get that vertical line to chop through that graph one time, no, not twice, okay, or more. So this passes the vertical line test. Now, just to make sure you understand this, let's suppose I had something like this. Let's say this was my graph. Let's say I had some sort of graph like this, okay, a sideways U. Now, this isn't. Uh, if I draw a vertical line this way. What happens? Well, it, pa it crosses through here and crosses through there. So this fails the vertical line test. So this right here does not represent a function. 
Okay, so just to be clear on that, I want to make sure you understand uh, the vertical line test. So if you said, yes, this is a function because it passes the vertical line test, I would be like, yeah, pretty awesome. And I would probably give you a little happy face. Uh, well, that's a terrible happy face. We can fix that up a little bit here. Give you a little happy face uh, because that's excellent. Okay, you need to know the vertical line test. It's very, very important. Uh, I'm sure your teacher will expect you to know that, your math teacher. All right, but there's another way we can kind of justify this. I said this is a parabola, okay? And this is uh, kind of a mapping diagram for a function. So I have, this is called the domain, this is called the range, and the domain is associated with the x uh, variables, and the range is associated with the y variables. So we're talking about the x and y's in terms of a point, a coordinate, or an ordered pair on an x, y um, axis. Let's put a little x in there. Okay, so... Let's take a look at this. So here we have, this is the way this works. So here I have the um, value two, the X coordinate two, okay? Because remember, this is an X, Y point, and two maps to four. Two is paired up with four. So we write it this way with the arrow pointing to four. Now, if you're not familiar with mapping diagrams, this is something that's fundamental to um, functions. So again, I have tons of this stuff on my channel. But better yet, you know, you will really master this stuff by being in like in my algebra class. Okay, but hopefully I kind of understand that. So we can um, um, determine this as a function using this information this way. Now, I don't have a complete set of information, but you can kind of, um, you can kind of extrapolate additional points on here and you'll be able to kind of see this uh, um, mapping in the same way. We can just use these basic numbers here uh, to make this point of how to determine whether a function um, whether something is a function with a mapping. Okay, so let's move on. So here I have negative two, okay? That negative two maps to four. Now I would not go like this. Negative two maps to four, that's correct. But because I already have a positive four, um, it's, going to, it, it's going to point to this four right here. So this is okay, okay? In terms of a mapping, if I said, if I gave you this right here, I said, is this a function? You would say yes, because here is a definition of a function, okay? Every x needs a, a maps to one and only one unique y value, okay? Every input only goes to every uh, one unique output. So can it be the same output? Yes, it can be, okay? As long as, the, as long as your x is pointing to only one number, that's what counts. So 2 maps to four, okay, negative two maps to four as well. It doesn't make a difference. If I have three and a map to four, that's fine, okay? That represents a function, so this is a mapping uh, diagram of this scenario. Now, I put this up here because you need to be familiar with it, okay? You need to be familiar with mapping functions. If you're looking at this video, then this is stuff you should know. All right, now we're gonna get back to this here in a second. So we determined that this is a function because it passes vertical line test, and we can see it this way as well. Now let's get to our second uh, question here. Is this a one-to-one -one function? Okay, is this a function that has an inverse function? So how do we uh, determine that? Well, there is another awesome test called the horizontal line test. And how does a horizontal line test uh, work? Well, you guessed it. It works just like the vertical line test. I can just draw a horizontal line through this graph if it uh, only goes through once, it passes the horizontal line test. But what's going on here? Mm, it's passing through more than once. So this guy fails the horizontal line test. So this is not a one-to-one -one function, meaning that we cannot find the uh, inverse of this entire graph. Now, you can break this up into sectors and find the inverse along certain intervals, but that's not what we're talking about. Here, this is just the whole entire graph is not a one-to-one -one function. It does not pass the horizontal line test. Okay, so if you uh, got that right, you know, by saying the horizontal line test, then uh, I think I'm gonna give you a little uh, mohawk, and I think I might even give you an A, because you pretty much answered the question, okay, what, is this a function? Yes, and uh, is it a one-to-one -one function? No, it does not pass the horizontal line test, but let's see if you can kind of take it a step further. And now let's take a look at this uh, mapping here, okay? So let's remember these values because I want to show you something uh, to see why um, this is not a one-to-one. -one. So remember, we had the point 2, 2 map to 4, 
and here we had negative 2 mapped to 4. So this was the function, right? This is the parabola, and we already determined that was the case. This is okay. Now, what happens when you have an inverse function, all right? So what happens uh, with the function and its inverse in terms of a mapping is that the domain and range get switched, all right? So in other words, this range here, these values will become the domain, and the domain will become the range, okay? So if that's the case, okay, if this in fact was a one-to-one -one function, let's go ahead and just uh, reverse uh, the values for the range, okay? So the range we're gonna put in the domain for the inverse, so that'd be a four. And then the domain we're gonna put in the range, so that'd be two and negative two. So now we'll be saying, okay, four is going to a two, and 4 is also going to negative 2, and this fails uh, the definition of a function, okay? One x value cannot go to two different um, uh, outputs. You got one input. One input can only go to one output to be a function. You can't have one input go to two different outputs, okay? So this fails uh, in terms of a mapping. So if I showed you this and I asked you, does this represent a function? You would say no, okay? I said, hey, does this represent uh, represent a function? You would say yes. And then if you got all of this right, then I just definitely, I just must give you a uh, crazy uh, mohawk, an A plus, a 100%, and I'll give you maybe like two, maybe like three bonus stars. If you knew all this stuff, I mean, you're definitely on the right track in terms of functions. Now, there's more we need to know about functions in terms of domain and range, and this is a big topic. Functions are huge, but we, you know, need to first understand, you know, how do we identify functions graphically, uh, you know, uh, and the importance of a one-to-one -one functions. Because if a function is one-to-one, -one, then we can find an inverse function. That's a whole another topic in and of itself. Of course, I have multiple videos on all this on my channel, and I really, really teach this stuff thoroughly in my math help program, uh, particularly in my Algebra 1 course and beyond. Okay, so if this video helped you out in some way and you're like, oh man, I really learned a lot, you know, well then that's good. That's the whole idea of live videos to have you learn a lot. So please consider uh, smashing that like button to help me out. Um, also, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Again, I have tons of videos on my channel, Organized from Basic to Advanced Math. But uh, again, my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.